Before the start of this video, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all my supporters across all platforms. Without your support, videos like the one you're about to watch would never happen. So huge thanks to each and every one of you. In this video, I want to suggest to you some ideas for making those combat situations a little bit more challenging and maybe even adding an extra level of danger, no matter what opponents or monsters you are using. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to this video and my channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm In Wills. I'm a small content creator from the United Kingdom. And in these this series of gibbering GM videos, I like to share with you some of the ideas I have about GMing and to see whether or not you can incorporate them into your own campaign worlds. Now, if you find this or any other video helpful, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing and pressing that bell button so you get a notification when the next video goes live. Now, before we get into the main content of this video, have you ever found that your creative juices have dried up and you're frantically searching for some adventure or encounter ideas well if you have had that happen to you then do stay tuned to the end of the video when i will be sharing with you where you can find some encounter ideas okay enough waffle let's get on with the content in any RPG system, there is always an unlimited list of opponents that the GM can put against the heroic party. These range from human opponents, such as bandits and ruffians, through humanoid monsters like goblins and bugbears, to undead and even demons and deities. There are some monsters that can turn you into stone, others that can aid you with a touch of their withered hand, and even some monsters that can turn all your metallic items to rust. As the players enjoy and progress throughout the campaign, there can be a tendency for game masters to introduce them to more and more opponents, sharing the menagerie of monsters that the rule set provides. However, what I'm going to suggest in this video is that those everyday monsters such as bandits and goblins, they can still provide the party with a challenge, even if their skills and or levels are quite high. How do we achieve this? Well, rather than looking at the monsters themselves, as in their armour, their weapons and their hit points, we look at something much more demanding and threatening. The situation. In order to share with you how this situation can impact the encounter, I want to take a small group of low-level mobs, let's say five or six bandits or ruffians with weapons and low-grade armour and a few hit points in total or hit points that are on the low side across all their locations of their bodies. Okay, just a quick side note here. I mentioned hit points locations across the bandit's body because in the rule set that I play, Mithras, um, you actually have, you don't have a total amount of hit points. You have hit points on your arms, legs, chest, head, etc. And if you are interested in seeing more about that rule set of Mithras, I'll put an overview to it either up here or down in the comments. Okay, let's get back to the main video. So I will be first to admit that those four to six bandits would not pose a significant threat to an experienced party of adventurers. But this would 
probably only be the case if it, they were meeting or encountering each other in a stand-up fight. For example, just walking through the forest and then coming together or down a dark alleyway. But changing the situation, we can actually make this small group of bandits or ruffians a lot more threatening and in order to provide you so with some ideas for that I've got a few encounter suggestions for you. Okay so the first situation I'm going to give you I like to call this one attacked from the middle. Now depending on where the party is walking or traveling the bandits can attack from any position of advantage. The party usually are putting their heavy fighters at the front, so encouraging the bandits to attack from behind might actually catch the party off guard. Coupled with this, the, as they approach, the bandits can hurl or fire missile weapons into the, the back of the party, then we might do some damage to those classes with, shall we say, less protective armour. The same would be true if the bandits suddenly appeared in the middle of the party. Now I have achieved this before by having the um, bandits hiding in dug out pits and erupting with surprise to inflict some initial points of damage. Of course, if the bandits were in trees firing down at the party, then this can also be a very beneficial tactical um, move. However, I'm going to come back to this one when I talk about running the gauntlet. So the next situation I like to call is, I'd like to call it changed environmental conditions. Now, this, the changes in the environment can make combat a lot more interesting, no matter who the party is actually fighting. Let's take, for example, ice and or snow. The party will definitely need to make saving throws or athletic throws to stay upright, but the bandits would not require such roles. Why? Well, they are used to fighting in these snowy conditions and have iron pronged um, devices attacked, attached to their boots, allowing them to keep their footing throughout the battle. Prone uh, opponents, for example, characters who have slipped and fallen to the ground, are much easier to hit. And of course, with the bandits wearing boots with iron prongs on them, a good downward stomp might do some considerable damage. Any condition that affects the visibility of both parties will impact, impact on the combat, but say fighting against the wind does um, allow the effects to be one-sided, while the party are battling their way through the wind, the bandits will have the wind to their back, uh, allowing some interesting rolls to missile fire as they go backwards and forwards. So I'm hoping you're getting some really good ideas for your next adventure here. As a GM, I must say that I'm always hoping that my own players are not listening in on this adventure, this um, video, because it might give them some, uh, they might, it might give them an indication what I've got um, in store for them. So the next combat situation I like to use and explain to you is almost that skirmish method of combat that getting quick hit and get out. So a weaker group of opponents are never likely to attack the party head on. It would mean complete suicide, but they are most probably going to adopt some tactics that allow them to appear, hit and escape, causing not a huge amount of damage, probably just a little, but making the party uneasy and trying to preempt the attack from every direction. 
These forms of attack can really put the party on edge as the bandits rush in and appear and then quickly get out of there. They might hurl missile weapons, take um, wild slashes of the party at the party, but not really doing a huge amount of um, damage before the surrounding darkness engulfs them once more. And of course, if this is happening at night, then it also allows as as GMs to add another level to the um, combat or the rest of the adventure, because fatigue is definitely going to be coming into play. And so, by the time they actually meet the four to six bandits face to face, the party might be very tired, and so the combat might go a little bit more in favour of the bandits. So situation number four I alluded to earlier on, which is called running the gauntlet. Now in this situation, the bandits have the advantage of high ground and or cover. Um, the party are normally making their way down a corridor or a ravine and the bandits or any other opponents are f firing down onto the party from high up in um, above the, the ravine from these um, hidden behind rocks and boulders. They can, of course, also be at the end of the ravine under cover, with the party having to go through the length of the ravine or through the length of the corridor where there's no cover at all as the bandits hurl down or fire down arrows or hurl down spears or even topple boulders over the side down onto the party who are rushing down the ravine to get to the end. Of course, of course, if we then add some environmental situation to it and make the floor or the ground of the ravine very uneven or even covered in ice and snow, then the combat can get even more interesting. Saving throws, please. And my final situation for you, or for situation number five, I call this one brains over brawn. Now, I often think that I'm in danger of stereotyping every single bandit and ruffian in the world, and I am stereotyping them to be stupid and basically willing to launch themselves to get impaled on the party's weapons as they approach. However, you know, we need to move away from the stereotypes, and it might not be the case that they are are completely, you know, lacking in the brain cell department. There might be one bandit who actually has considerable brains and favours this over the brawn and is actually leading the bandit to greater success. And if they're doing that, then the situation will definitely be different. And you can let your mind run over how many different ways brains can be used over the brawn. To give you a few suggestions, think about nets being dropped onto the party, especially if they're weighted down at the edges, or darts covered with sleeping poison, or even poisonous blades. You know, anything could happen. And I've just thought of another one. Maybe they've got animals that they're using to attack with as well. Throwing snakes, maybe. More about that later on. Now, you might be a little bit concerned now that these bandits or ruffians are going to take over and, or actually manage to succeed in um, neutralising your party or even knocking them unconscious. But, you know, if that has happened, then consider it as a positive as the bandits might take them off and it might lead to an adventure about escaping or they might meet NPCs who have already been captured that can lead to new possibilities in the campaign. And yeah, they might even be the characters or the party that are rescuing the rescuers, if that's right. 
Now, at the beginning of the video, I talked about getting some support with encounters and adventures when your creative juices are running low. Well, I have started a new little project that I'm quite proud of and pleased about. Anyway, if you head over to the, my Ko-fi site, the link will be down in the description below. You can find the start of a collection of encounters that you can purchase. Purchase. Now, each encounter is one side of A4 paper long and provides information about how to run the encounter, a piece of descriptive narrative and some ideas of how you can adapt the encounter to any campaigns you run. And currently there's only a few of these, but I'm working on adding one every now and again or maybe several a month. So do go back and have a look and there'll be some adventures coming a little bit later as well. So I hope this video has provided you with some ideas that you can use in your own campaign to make those lower level monsters a little bit more challenging for your group. And I mentioned um, snake throwers earlier on. Well, in the Mithras campaign that I run, there are a group of animal handlers. And these animal handlers range from using um, dogs to falcons to snakes. And there is a, a order of um, animal handlers who actually control snakes and use them as part of their weapons, throwing them into the faces of their opponents. And if you would like to gain some access to that, then over on the Kofi site again, there's some um, tiers for you to subscribe to that will actually allow you to gain um, the behind the scenes look at my campaign or the orders that we've created and towns etc etc they're all there you will have to create a world anvil account to access them and be um, a member on the Kofi site but apart from that easily accessible and for higher orders you even get to see my um, campaign notes my adventure notes from the um, party adventures that we've done and played live for people you gain access for them as well so lots of things there for for you to go and have a look at and also, as well as all that, you get the opportunity to have um, videos to dedicated to you, to be part of the supporter club and even gain access to exclusive blogs and my blooper videos. And believe me, there's plenty of bloopers going on when I'm making these videos. <laughs> anyway. Do go along and have a look and if you would like to support me further then I'll say right now thank you very much. And that's it, another Gibbering GM video complete. I really enjoy talking and learning from other GMs, so do put your comments down below, or if you'd like to send me a message on Discord or on um, YouTube, then please do so. It's be lovely to hear from you. Okay, so until next time, this is the Gibbering GM signing out and returning to his campaign. Have fun, everyone, and happy role playing. See ya. Bye.